would have it, as fate would have it, is that Ken met a young lady. Her name was Debbie. And her stepfather happened to be a high priest in the church, Ted Linder. And Brother Ted was not too happy that Ken was dating his stepdaughter. But as things would have it, the romance progressed and they got married. And so Ted figured that uh, Ken was now his son-in-law and he began to witness to him about God, about this Jesus Christ, about the church that God had called forth in these latter days. And Ken thought his father-in-law was the craziest man he had ever heard before. Always talking about these testimonies about Jesus and about God and his experiences and things that God had done for him. And Ted was sharing with Ken one day and uh, he, says, he said, Ken, he says, if I could hold some meetings with you and that would show these things to you, he says, I think you would understand and come to believe. And Ken had just kind of had it up there. He was frustrated. And he says, all right. He says, I'll agree to these meetings. And if I don't see things your way, he says, I don't want to hear any more about God. I don't want to hear any more about Jesus Christ. I don't want to hear any more about your church. And so they had the meeting. And there were six of them. They went through the first meeting, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth. They came to the sixth meeting. And as Ken said, I was just so happy. This was the last meeting. This was it. I wasn't going to have to hear any more about God and Jesus and about the church. And so they went through the meeting, the presentation. They came and uh, Brother Ted said, let's have a closing prayer. Ken said, I close my eyes. He says, it was over. No more. He says, Why? while the prayer was being said, he said, I saw myself standing in front of this building, like here where I am right now. And he says, I was with my brothers. And he said, the thing that struck me odd about it was, was the wood flooring. It was in a V-shaped wood floor. And they said, Amen. And he opened up his eyes. He says, what just happened? He says, I haven't been drinking anything. And I haven't been smoking anything. What just happened? And so everyone left, and his father-in-law was the last person to leave. And Ted held out his hand, he shook Ken's hand, he says, Ken, I don't know if I should tell you this or not, but while the prayer, closing prayer was being said, I had a vision. I saw you and your brother standing in front of this building together, and what struck me as strange about the building was the V-shaped floor pattern describing exactly what Ken had seen while his eyes were closed. And he pulled his hand back and he says, what is going on here? I know he hasn't been drinking anything or smoking anything. And so that night, as Ken went to bed, he challenged the Lord. He says, all right, Lord, what do you want me to do? And there was silence. He says, ah, I knew it wasn't anything. And so he went to bed. But in the next two weeks, this experience kept coming back to him. How could his father-in-law see the very same thing that he had seen? He could not explain it away. The more he tried to explain it away, the wearier he got. And it just kept coming back to him. At the end of two weeks, he went to bed that night. He says, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do? He said he heard a voice just as though you and I would talk in a conversation one with another. And the voice says, I said, I want you to repent of your sins and be baptized in my name. Ken said, boy, he was up and out of that bed, over to the phone. He called his father-in-law. He heard a sleepy voice on the other end answer, Hello? He says, I want to be baptized. I said, well, who, who is this? Well, this is Ken. Ken who? <laughs> Ken, your son-in-law. I want to be baptized. Well, when? Right now. Well, 
they arranged it, and so, but anyhow, Cain was baptized, had the hands laid upon him for the receiving of the gift of the Holy Ghost. And if you were to meet Cain today, you would have no inkling of the life he lived before. Because he is a new creature in Jesus Christ. He has been transformed. He is a new person altogether and bears the witness of Jesus Christ. You see, that is the power of the grave here today. As we go there, there is an empty tomb. He is not there. He is alive. Amen. And where is he supposed to be alive but in the lives of those who proclaim him as Lord and Savior? That we worship a risen Savior. As Brother Richard talked about, that he has that victory over death. Let me begin by telling you a little story. My mother and the father and their little girl were back in America were driving on a Sunday afternoon. Beautiful day, like the day, and uh, the weather is very nice. They're driving down the road, and uh, the windows are down because the weather is so nice and everything. The little girl is in the back. And uh, back in America, we have uh, what we call bumblebees. They're about that big, big as your th thumb. Very nasty creature. I don't know if you have bees here like that, but they're yellow and black, and they buzz, and they, they can sting you and cause a, a great deal of pain. And if you're allergic to their sting, they can kill you. And so anyhow, they're driving down the road, happy singing, you know, and the windows are down, and it happens that a bumblebee flies into the car, gets caught into the car, flies in against the back window, smacks against that, and now it's really angry, and it's buzzing. And the little girl sees the yellow jacket, the, the bumblebee, and she starts to scream, Daddy, Daddy, the bee, the bee, the bee! You know, and the dad's trying to get the car under control, and finally he's able to pull it over. And the bee is buzzing, and sees the little girl. The, dad, the girl is in hysteria. She says, Daddy, Daddy, the bee, the bee is going to sting me. The bee see, sees the little girl and goes for the little girl. Daddy, Daddy, the bee. And the daddy reaches out and grabs the bee, waiting for the inevitable sting. Yo! And let's go with the bee. And the bee is angry and is buzzing. And the little girl says, Daddy, Daddy, the bee will sting me. And daddy says, No, daughter. See what daddy has in his hands. The bee's stinger. This is what Jesus has done. He has taken away the sting of death. Satan has no victory over those who follow him, who proclaim him as Lord and Savior. And all Satan can do is buzz. We are new creatures in him. He has given us victory. In the Book of Mormon, it tells us that the natural man is an enemy unto God. In the very last chapter of the Book of Mormon is this scripture. It's in Moroni chapter 10, verse 29. And it gives this invitation. Yea, come unto Christ, and be perfected in Him, and deny yourselves of all ungodliness. And if you should deny yourself of all ungodliness, and love God with all your might, mind, and strength, then is His grace sufficient for you. Come unto Christ and be perfected in Him. That word, be perfected, simply means this. Come and surrender to God and be at peace with Him. Let us move forward to be those new creatures in Christ every day bearing witness of our Lord and Savior that He has changed our lives, that we are new creatures in Him. May God bless us to that end.